Life revolves around the problems we have and want to solve. It's an ongoing quest for constant happiness. If we solve all our problems, we won't have anything to worry about, and our life will be peaceful and happy, with no room for suffering. We all aspire to achieve this in our lives because our goal is to be happy, but I believe we approach the problem the wrong way. Thinking that we must solve everything that worries us is a mistake because it's impossible. New worries will always arise in your life, replacing the old ones. You might be thinking that it's impossible to be happy and live without suffering. However, I'll tell you that it's entirely possible and within reach for all Stoics. They found the solution to this problem, a solution that personally changed my life and my way of understanding things. I hope that once you understand it, it will have the same effect on you. What I'm going to tell you about is the cornerstone of Stoic thinking and can be applied to absolutely everything that happens in your life. I'm talking about the dichotomy of control. The dichotomy of control involves distinguishing between what we can control and what we cannot. You might be wondering how you can use the dichotomy of control in your life. Don't worry. In this video, I'll explain in depth what the dichotomy of control is and provide examples and practical exercises so you can start incorporating this incredible tool into your life. Epictetus, one of the most important Stoic philosophers, understood the importance of the dichotomy of control in his life. In his own words, the chief task in life is simply this, to identify and separate matters so that I can say clearly to myself, which are external, not under my control, and which have to do with the choices I actually control. It's an easy concept to understand, separate things we can control from those we cannot. And what things are under our control? Our thoughts and actions. What things are not under our control? Everything else. If we delve deeper into the dichotomy of control, we realize that there are really three categories of events. Those that are entirely under our control, those that are partially under our control, and those that are not under our control. Being kind to others is entirely under our control. Being healthy is partially under our control. Whether the sun rises tomorrow is not under your control. Differentiating these three things is important. We should focus on what we can control, like being kind to others or taking care of our health, and stop worrying about what we cannot control. Now that you know what the dichotomy of control is, let's see how we should use it to stop worrying in our lives. Imagine you're not feeling well and you decide to go to the hospital for medical tests. After the tests, the doctors tell you that they'll have the results in two days. You go back home and start worrying about your health because you don't know the severity of your condition. You suffer because you think you might have a serious illness that could affect your life. After two days of suffering due to uncertainty, your medical results arrive and it turns out that you're healthy and well. Now you start feeling relieved. Did all your worry and suffering serve any purpose? You suffered for no reason. But what if the result of your medical tests had been a serious health problem? The same applies. All you achieve is suffering twice, once before receiving the results and once after receiving them. I'm not saying that it's not normal to worry in such situations. I simply believe that in this case, we've done what was in our control, getting medical tests. Suffering for a result that's beyond our control makes no sense. That unnecessary suffering won't change the result for better or worse. So, wouldn't it be wiser to stay calm until you know the outcome, avoiding unnecessary suffering in the process? This is a clear example of how the dichotomy of control can help us in our lives. A normal person wouldn't stop worrying until they knew the result, but a stoic remains calm because they know the result doesn't depend on them. In the words of Seneca, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. If we have a problem but have complete control over how to solve it, why should we worry? And if we have a problem but have no control over how to solve it, why should we worry anyway? Worrying only causes unnecessary suffering. Not worrying doesn't mean you don't care. It means accepting the problem and seeking a solution. If it depends on you, accepting that something depends on you leads to proactivity, to trying to change what you don't like. But it also implies not getting frustrated if the situation is beyond your control. You can't control the outcome of an event but you can give your best to move that outcome closer to what you want. Regarding the previous example, you could strive to live a healthy life to reduce the chances of a severe illness. 
even though you can influence the outcome of certain events in your life. You shouldn't get frustrated if things don't turn out the way you want in the end. Remember that some things are beyond your absolute control. Think of an archer shooting an arrow at a target. The archer can have the best posture, the best bow, and the straightest arrow. But once the archer releases the arrow, it's no longer under their control whether the arrow hits the bullseye. A gust of wind could divert the arrow, an animal could intercept it, or the target could fall because it wasn't securely fastened. Anything can affect the outcome of something you're trying. Something that is beyond your control. It might prevent you from achieving your goal, and it wouldn't be your fault. But if you don't give your best, You've already failed before trying because all you can do is focus on what you can control and do your best to bring the final result closer to what you want. All of this applies to any situation in your life, a job interview, a relationship with another person trying to pass an exam. Don't focus on winning, instead, focus on doing your best. What happens if, after doing your best to achieve something, you fail? The most common reaction would be frustration, anger, or sadness. But do all these emotions really serve you? You might think that all these emotions are justified because we're human and we feel emotions, it's normal. But animals also feel emotions. What makes us unique as a species is our ability to think. Thinking has elevated us to the top of the food chain, not feeling emotions like sadness or anger. So as humans, we have the ability to decide how we act in any situation. Remember the dichotomy of control. What has happened in the past cannot be changed, so there's no point in suffering over it. What is in your control is how you'll act in the future to prevent that failure from happening again. Despite all this, the Stoics understood that there is always an initial emotional response to any situation, and this emotional response cannot be controlled. The Stoics call this proto-passions. For example, Imagine you've been studying for months for a crucial exam, but after all that effort, you fall ill on the day of the exam and fail. The initial reaction would be anger or frustration because, after so much effort, you failed and it was something beyond your control. But after that initial moment of anger, you have to decide whether you'll let negative emotions take over or if you'll apply the dichotomy of control. Initially, it might take longer to control your emotions, but with practice, your proto-passions will last less and less time. Once you've gained a deep understanding of the dichotomy of control, it's crucial to use it to transform negative situations into positive ones. What has already happened cannot be changed, and we have no control over it. However, we do have control over how we react to it. This can make the difference between victory and defeat, excellence and mediocrity. A novice Stoic uses the dichotomy of control to avoid unnecessary suffering, but an expert Stoic uses it to learn from their mistakes and improve. Thanks to understanding what is under their control and therefore changeable, for 2,000 years, Stoic philosophers have been applying the dichotomy of control to their lives, using this tool to become happier, suffer less, and grow as individuals. Now, you have the opportunity, just like them, to apply it in your life. I suggest an exercise for you to practice. Make a list of all the problems in your life, all the things that negatively affect you. Once you've made that list, divide the problems you've written into two groups, one for problems you cannot control and another for problems you control wholly or partially. After dividing your list of problems, accept and forget all those that are beyond your control. With the list of problems over which you have some control, write next to each problem what you can do to solve it. This will give you a better understanding of the problems in your life and help you seek solutions, facing your life with more tranquility. Try to apply this in your daily life to the problems you encounter. With practice, you'll begin to live more calmly and learn from your mistakes. What do you think of the dichotomy of control? Would you like me to make a video about another stoic topic that interests you? I look forward to your response in the comments. Before you go, I'd appreciate it if you could like the video, as it helps me spread this philosophy to more people. If you don't want to miss any videos, subscribe and hit the notification bell. I also provide links to my other social media, where I upload more stoic content. I hope the content of this video serves you as it has served me. Here are two videos full of stoic wisdom that you'll surely enjoy. Until next time.